Fora TV. The world is thinking. Our guest today at the Commonwealth Club of California is GM Chairman and CEO Rick Wagner. Uh, Mr. Wagner, in the 1990s, GM uh, had a leadership position with, with the electric car, was first to market among a major uh, US, U.S. manufacturer. And there's a question now whether uh, General Motors can be a green car company with the Volt and everything else while also litigating against the state of California and fighting cafe standards and fighting uh, U.S. Uh, California legislation. Does that, how does that play out in your mind in terms of the messages it sends about the company and to consumers? Well, I mean, it's, it's, let's face it, it's a pretty tough environment. I mean, ultimately, we're, uh, what we're trying to do uh, from the standpoint of technology is make sure that we have the capability that um, anyone in the industry has and hopefully have the best capability from a technology perspective to provide it, provide it to consumers. Um, from the standpoint of the legislation here that's being fought in California, frankly, that's not a General Motors issue. That's an auto industry issue, and the whole industry is 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 uh, been against the legislation because I think the view has been that it's it's more than we can reasonably do and frankly the only way we could meet some of the current proposed legislation is simply stop offering vehicles that don't meet the standards here in the state so uh, that seems to us a rather you know a rather tough resolution of the issue so you know we do have new a new national uh, standard it's tough I can tell you and so our view is, hey, let, you know, let us run after that. Um, and uh, you know, if we do that, we will all, uh, you know, as, as a nation and certainly participate here in California, really make a difference in, in this whole issue of energy security and, and um, CO2 emissions. And you know, frankly, it's not our purpose in life to, to, to be fighting any, any state government. And fortunately, we don't have to do it a lot. And we don't particularly want that to be viewed as our image, or we certainly don't. But, you know, we've also got a, got, a, got a, we have a responsibility to put our voice into the legislative process to say, here's what we think we can do under these circumstances. And if we think it's something we just can't do, then, then we need to make that statement uh, along with our colleagues in the auto industry. As I understand, the difficulty in meeting some of those standards is partly the product mix, the, the, the mix of cars that are sold. And if high gas prices are driving people to smaller cars anyways, isn't that going to work in the direction of greater fuel efficiency? The market high oil prices are going to drive people to smaller cars regardless of, uh, in addition to legislation? Yeah, it, 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 it certainly will. And we're seeing that, by the way. I mean, if you look at the development in the market on the trends of segment demand, you know, large sport utility demand is a lot smaller today than it was four years ago, maybe, maybe running about half. So I think consumers are acting pretty rationally. Uh, the other day, or I think it was yesterday, we, we announced that we were introducing a version of our, of our small car, the Chevy Cobalt, which gets the leading fuel economy in the segment, 36 miles per gallon. The average uh, car for the whole range of cars a requirement in 2015, according to the new EPA legislation, is, is 36. So we've got a lot of work to do to meet, to meet the legislation on the table, and you know, we're, we're, we're up for the game and going at it, but I mean, I think that describes to people how across the segment we're going to have to move from kind of get, get across the whole car segment what the best vehicles in, in the small car category get today. So there's a lot of work to do to, to meet those standards.